There's one thing that it forced my tears to come out if I recall half of it for my breakfast and then half of it lunch and dinner. That was it. Fortunately, I was able, but I can't anymore hold my tears. The embarrassment I suffered convincing me to go back. No. Sa lahat po ng napagdaanan ninyo, sir, what makes you cry? Well, there are a lot of them. Mm. First, of course, if I reminisce the past like what I had really did a while ago, when we were orphans, that we were in a very remote area. And when my auntie was telling me about our late mother appearing just to mm -mm. take care of my younger sister. What happened to me on February 14 of oh, yes. 1965. First time we had a reunion in Lepanto. <coughs> you know, <coughs> I do not know why. It came to my mind that I became so interested to attend that grand reunion of all. Oh. And the reason why uh, I told myself I have to be there to see that lady who mm. did that to me February 14 of 1965. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I went there, she was not oh, there. Okay. But you know, why did I like to see her? What came to me was, this is an opportunity for me to say thank you for what you have done to me. I think you are used by the Lord to challenge me in order for me to bring out the best that I can to improve myself. But as I said, she was not there. I was not able to say that to her. Later on, years, years had passed. I was already, uh, you see, Timur. Mm -hmm. We had a reunion, grand reunion also here in Baguio at Cap Building. I was invited as uh, the guest speaker. Mm -hmm. When I went there, she was there. Yes. She was there. Well, she was already married. Mm. I was already married. So <laughs> it was part of my speech, but I did it in such a way that I do not like to embarrass her. Uh -oh. So she cried in front of so mm. many of you, confessing also what happened. Speaking of family, sir, how did you meet your wife? <laughs> well, you know, uh, again, the difficulties of life. I refrained from courting when I was in uh, Baguio Tech at the time. There were few uh, beautiful ladies that I think they pitied me, but I was nurtured with the old-fashioned way my late grandfather so I never, I never did something wrong against them. So never can I get on a girlfriend, sir? Awan. 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 Never. <laughs> My first time, I think it's the best time when I was already about to graduate college of law. I met a, a student of mine who was also a CNI scholar. So I met her. I got no in a remarkable issue. <laughs> Talaga, I have been. Yeah, I'll tell you, just a part of my life. Mm. Talaga nga issue, but you know, no mo nga gasat, saan mo nga gasat. Nagkaawatan kami. Eh, hindi nagbalinak ng abogado. 1974. It was also the time that her application to go to the United States was approved. Mm. Napangkupay in Tulud, Pimande, Manila. Supposed to be 
kuna agawid kan si end of 75 tag kasarta mm. kuna na well ang gore kata ilakok pa ngro dati balay ko so that I'll come home for good mm. kuna na so the following year in bauna de kasin sina nga nagawid dito yan in bauna nga tip recorder kas kada tip kas kada I love you I love you kung kuna na tayo in record na tao a moment okay then <laughs> Si Mang Pwede kasi in Sina. I was din in Tabuk Kalinga Apayaw attending to uh, cases. Cases there. Nagdagos mo ito yung gagisan. Sino na ito yung attorney dumugan na gayam nga yun eh. Kasi in Sina ko, ay! Pat-pat sinyo, lukluku na dito kasi in Sina mo. No, agkasar no iso na dito yung Abril, ni kastoy ti kasarna, which which was true. That lady also, a very good, indecent lady who was an accountant. Kaya't na piman siya ng you know. I came from the old fashion wing ano an sinut na kito lagam isulang ng mga faithful, yes. But di nangug na dejay without waiting for me. Nakaungut. Nag-overseas ka ni Kasinsin ako. Luk-luk ko yung nakalaan. When I came from the book, I learned about it. I tried to call my girlfriend. No more. She does not like to talk to me. So in short, saan kami ng agkagasan. That was it. So, 1978, I became the lawyer of my mother-in-law because oh. all of them, except my mother-in-law, future, were, by uh, then, yeah, future. were living in San Francisco in ah. California because my father-in-law was World War II veteran. Okay. And after World War II, he continued his service in the U.S. Army. So he got all his families, including my wife. Mm -hmm. My wife. No. And... Uh, 79, nagbakas yun ni bakit ko. Hamo pa yung bakit na tayo. Hamo pa yung bakit na tayo. My first time to see her. Then, of course, nagkasjay kami mo ko ni umunang ex-girlfriend ko. You know, under the old-fashioned style, I had gone to the extent of going to the parents of my ex-girlfriend and Tell them nicely nga, well, and ako pagpabasulin na makigayumak because di anak kayo mo't tinagmadi. Ay, sila na kung nak makita ma, ang ladingit na piman, tati amunak na kami. Well, so nga, I cleared it with them before. Si Mang Puti ay nakita ni bakit ko, ni, mabalhin sa amut ah. Hindi ko ang medyo kayat na mo. So, to cut this story short, da kami tinagtuloy. So nga, I've been in a jokingly manner said, the most precious attorney's fee that I had in my law practice, my own, my only one wife. <laughs> so that was Correct. how I married my wife. Aww. So that was it. You are a father of three brilliant and beautiful <laughs> women. What's the hardest part of being a father to these three? Oh, well, you know, of course. And not only me as a father or as a parent to discipline your children. There was a time that uh, we have two of them, Janice and Jillian. Uh -huh. And my wife was still working in San Francisco. So I was the father mother of the two uh, young mm -hmm. girls with me. So to bleed the hair of my daughter, to bring them to school. I agree. I do not know. I do not know how to do it. So, ni pag ni anting a filumina di ka aruba mi di ko ba kung ano pangasiman. So she loved doing it. So she was the one bleeding book de anak ko de itolod ko de eskula mapanakagtrabaw mapangkoman pick up ni dan. That was my situation. At 1988, at the time, my 
Becky was pregnant for our third. You know. But you know what happened when I arrived in San Francisco then at the time. My wife was not in, in their house. She was in St. Luke's Hospital, San Francisco. And I was told by the doctor, the child wants to come out and she is only more than five months. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so I went home praying, praying. The first thing for Mount Zion Hospital to do was to prevent the child from coming out. So uh, they did. But again, on the third day, no more. My wife was complaining about the effect of the medicines that were giving her. So I was called. So we we'll let the child come out. The child will come out. We will examine the child. If there is no abnormality, we will incubate the child. If there is no abnormality, we will call you to decide mm -hmm. what you are going to do. So that was it. So I was cannot sleep, uh, praying. Then, about past 12 o'clock, Midnight, I was called by the hospital. They told me the child came out. We had just finished. I went to visit the and says, very little as if as a big friend. So she stayed in the hospital for four months in the incubator to complete the nine months period. So that's our third uh, girl. Yeah, mm. that was so. Oh. And she is now. Is a supervisor nurse psychiatry department of Reno, oh. working in Reno. You know you can feed yourself, right? Grandpa shouldn't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for interesting us your life story. It was very inspiring. Yeah.